horns up welcome to headbangers kitchen live guys i would recommend you get yourself a drink coffee tea hot chocolate a cocktail a beer or some wine <coughs> get yourselves a drink strap yourselves into your seats because this might be the longest and most intense live stream i've ever done because we're cooking up a freaking storm and i'm not joking i mean just look at all the prep behind me we are making four dishes <coughs> now i was supposed to start this live stream at 9 pm it is currently 8 30 pm i have gone to the gym finished my workout i've come home i've had a cucumber i've had some carrot and i am starving so i said let's get on with the show cuz i was going to eat my dinner on camera so this live stream is going to be in four parts first we're going to make my dinner then we're going to sit down and eat my dinner and have a chat and then we're going to make my lunch for tomorrow which will also be my meal prep for the week so I hope you've got a drink. I hope you've strapped yourselves in. Let's get on with the show, my friends. All right, so let me give you a bird's eye. Actually, you know what? Yeah. Let me start and get a few prep things done and out of the way. Okay? So the first thing we're doing is we're marinating some chicken. Now, this is just boneless, skinless chicken thighs. that have been cut into sort of bite size pieces all right and we're going to marinate this first now normally i would recommend you marinate this in turmeric kashmiri red chili powder uh, some um, what's the word i'm looking for some turmeric some uh, coriander powder and some cumin powder but i have this which is my chapli kebab spice mix that i have been wanting to use up for a while now and i haven't had the opportunity so i'm kind of going to use this to marinate this so i'm going to take this it smells lovely a lovely heady smell of cumin i think it's just cumin and coriander seeds and some pepper if i'm not mistaken so i'm going to get out my sort of teaspoon measure and get some a good amount of this spice powder into the chicken cuz this chicken is going to be eaten along with some dahi rice or curd rice as we call it in india okay so that spice thing is done i'm going to get some salt a little less than a teaspoon you know i mean i don't want to over salt it as well 3/4 of a teaspoon i'd rather you know add a little okay actually a little bit more i think about a teaspoon of salt no more than that this is about 1 pound of chicken and um i'm going to put in a squeeze of lemon yeah a nice big squeeze of lemon juice and i'm also going to add in and this is just on the spur of the moment i feel like i should add this in right now but you know what if i can't find it i'm not going to be adding it in um did i find it yes i found it all right i'm going to add a little bit of ginger garlic paste there we go little bit yeah all right fantastic so we got some ginger garlic paste in there we got some lemon juice in there and we got salt and my special chapli kebab spice mix how many of you have heard of a chapli kebab like i said this is the spice mix cumin coriander some pepper let me know if you've ever eaten a chapli kebab or if you've ever heard of a chapli kebab the recipe is on my channel now chapli kebab is normally made with beef and it's got these chunks of bone marrow in it and it's absolutely delicious like it is an incredible dish um 
this is basically you can i mean i've taken the spices of a chapli kebab and put it on my chicken so i have a really tasty chicken all right the chicken is going to just now marinate while we make the rest of the stuff the stuff uh, i've got okay so let's start with the uh, the ground pork here this is for my dinner which is going to be a pork burger so i've got some again special italian sausage spice powder here this is just fennel uh with some italian oregano and uh i can't remember what else i put in this garlic powder so i season my pork with this generously because i really want to amp up the flavors and i also got to finish the seasoning so i also need to put salt in this which i am going to do and now since this is only 250 grams of pork mince i will only put half a teaspoon of salt and we are making a pork and pineapple hamburger for my dinner so that's the ground pork mince now i don't really want to use my hands cuz i need to wash them then so i just going to get a fork i'm going to fork things up you can see this is the ground pork just fork it up get those spices in there yeah mix it all well there we go and this can also sit for a bit no 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 hurry there lovely ground pork there we go so that's our ground pork for the pineapple i am using just regular canned pineapple it's the best for this kind of stuff all right so my ground pork is ready what i want to do now is i am really hungry i need to eat something so let's get our bowl here into this bowl i'm going to put some cream cheese i've got some cream cheese left over i need my trusty baby spatula to get it out all the cream cheese let's do that there we go there's the cream cheese okay in goes the cream cheese get all everything out of the box waste nothing and that's why i love these spatulas see they get everything out the box is almost like it's been licked clean yeah get that in there get everything out a bit more okay and now make sure i get this off the foil as well great so that goes in i'm going to take a little bit of butter not too much about this much butter i'm going to add it in here and now i'm going to put in some corn this is just cooked corn yeah this is just boiled cooked corn the white thing is cream cheese so i put my corn in here all right and now i'm just going to microwave this for about i don't know let's do 20 seconds so it goes into the microwave for 30 seconds so you can see it's up there in the micro about 20 seconds should do it yeah we just want to warm up that corn and melt the cheese and the butter a little bit so it really coats everything nicely we're basically making like a corn salad and that's kind of my vegetable component with the hamburger instead of eating like french fries and other stuff oh 30 seconds 10 seconds too long but that's okay what will happen is the residual heat will also help to sort of temper the onions a little bit so let's get down to it yeah so there's the corn i've got some spring onions here so i'll put those in i can add all of them in 
it's a good way to also get everything rid of like rid of everything that's in your fridge all right let's give that a mix all right the cheese the cream it's all nice and soft now and it's coating all the corn kernels yeah like you can also add mayo to this but i i'm already adding enough fat here with the cheese and the butter so i'm not adding mayo into this i want to keep this nice and light and not too many calories as well that's the other thing so there all this has got a good mix now i'm going to add a little bit of cilantro in here i'm also going to add a little bit of lime juice not lemon lime specifically lime just add a little give it a little acidity to cut through the richness of the uh of the the cheese and the cream we're using you can also add some chili if you like so i'm going to sprinkle a little salt and pepper in this yeah so that will give me a little bit of flavor as well and now just give this all a good mix i'm using the baby spatula i could have used a bigger spatula but i just i don't want to get too many dishes dirty if you know what i mean i mean we don't have dishwashers here. i mean at least i don't have a dishwasher here in india the dishwasher is me so it's it's manual dishwashing all right let's taste it for seasoning mm oh that's good good amount of salt mm and use a bit of lime bit more lime it's a little more acidity perfect um what else what else do i want to add anything more to this I think I'm good. Actually, you can add a little bit. So since I don't really use uh I don't use like the spicy chili powder, so every Indian has got one of these at home. So I've got some Kashmiri chili powder which is like paprika. Oh, wait, I have paprika as well. Oh, why don't I just use the paprika? Oh, let's do that. Why didn't I think of that? So I've got some sweet paprika here. I'm going to put a little bit of this in as well. Just a little. So a little sweet paprika. Give it a little more oomph. I mean, you can also put the spicy chili powder in there. No worries. Like that's absolutely fine. Um, I'm also. feeling a little brave yes this is inspired from an elote it is not exactly an elote so i don't want to call it that so hmm yeah i think i'm good actually or maybe not should i add some pickled jalapenos as well Guys, I need you to vote very quickly. Should I put a little bit of jalapeno in this or not? I'm a spice who, so I don't normally like it spicy. But should I put in? Should I should I put a jalapeno in as well? Yes. All right. Let's get some pickled jalapenos out. I'm gonna do one. Two. I'm gonna find a third one without some seeds in it. Okay, three pickled jalapenos. It is. All right. That this has to go back in the fridge now. You can see me. I don't know when Dipti pickled these. I'm not a big fan of spice, as most of you know. So I'm not being too generous with this. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna. Just give a little squirt of honey as well. Just you know to give it a little sweet note to balance the spiciness. Again, just a hair. Like for me, food is all about balance. All right, let's chop these jalapenos and hopefully my fingers won't burn. All 
All right, there goes our chopped jalapeno. Jalapeno slices in. I'm gonna be brave and lick my finger and see if it's spicy. Not too bad, but I should wash my hand. Don't worry guys, this is just the beginning of the live stream. I have started it early because I was starving and I needed to eat. So anyway, quick wash of my hands. All right, let's get on with this salad now. So the jalapenos are in there, the sweet paprika, the cream cheese, all of that is in. I will do one quick taste of this. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. Thank you. The jalapeno adds a lovely sort of spicy freshness to it. I'm quite enjoying that. So shall we just make the burger now? Because that's the next step. Now I'm going to throw some of this stuff here, the garbage. So give me a second. Move things around. All right, so here's the corn. This goes with my hamburger. That's my dinner. It's inspired by an uh, by a Mexican corn salad, elote, and um, yeah, this is good, simple, easy. Got made very quickly. Let's move on to the hamburger. So, oh, drop some stuff. Hmm, butter. Ooh, butter. Right, so the burger now, what are the burger components? So I've got my ground pork here, which is seasoned with oregano, garlic powder and fennel and salt. Okay, this is our patty. I have got these uh, beetroot buns. So I'll be using one of these beetroot buns for my burger. In fact, I should open it up now. I will of course have a slice of cheese on my burger. Do you like your burger without cheese? There are some people in this world who don't like cheese on a burger. And then of course I've got my canned pineapple. And I'm thinking I will add a sweet chili mayo. How does that sound? A sweet chili mayo to go with the burger and I'm, I'm good. Cheese, pineapple, sweet chili sauce and uh, we're good to go I think. What do you guys think? I think it's good. I mean, if you ask me, I mean, given that uh, this was my plan all along, but yes. All right, so the burger bun is out. It's from a local uh, coffee shop. It's a nice beetroot burger bun. I mean, they use the beetroot juice to give it the color. I don't know if that's really adding much nutritional value, but hey, it's a burger. At the end of the day, I'm not eating a burger because it's, well, you know, burger can be nutritious. Why not? Meat in a burger is protein if we have some vegetables on the side we have a balanced meal and the carbs are from the bun and the cheese is the fat and we've got ourselves a, a trifecta of all the macros carbs protein and fat oh yeah all right let's get cracking y'all i'm gonna bring out the stars of the next show Trust me, when you eat pork and pineapple together, you will see the light. I mean, you know, I know many people find religion as they grow older. I found pork and pineapple. That's my thing. Trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. All right, let's get that sweet chili sauce and the mayo. All right, so here's my sweet chili sauce, which is almost over now. I got this from Thailand and I'm going to be using a low calorie mayo because there's enough fat in the cheese, the butter, the pork. So save a few calories with this. Not too many, but let's get let's get on. Let's get on. I'm just talking too much. All right, let's get back to business. All right. So you can now see the board here. First thing I'm going to do is get a bowl. Let's put that sweet chili, chili sauce in there. If it ever comes out of the tube, there it is. Sweet chili sauce. Trust me, this is so good and so delicious. 
okay there we go so this is about a tablespoon maybe of the sweet chili sauce into that goes the mayo now you can do equal parts depending on how spicy you want it i'm probably doing like one and a half uh, times of mayo all right and now just mix it and now you'll get like this orangey mayo there we go look at that sweet chili mayo done for the pork burger and of course taste it for snake damn that's good you know what i'm gonna do you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put a little bit of lime lime just brighten that up a little bit give it another taste banging all right this is done now let's get on with the bun always a serrated knife for bread all right let's just give this a there we go i didn't cut it very well but that's fine i'm going to put this away and i'm going to put this away we don't need them so i also like to clean up while i cook it's very important to me Now keep the kitchen as tidy as possible. All right, here we got some butter. So we are going to butter the buns. Doesn't have to be heavily buttered, just you know enough to give it a little color. All right. And again, I'm using the serrated knife, so I don't have to take out another knife for the butter and then wash another knife. Just use like multi-purpose. All right, there we go with that. Fantastic. Now let's move on to shaping the burger patty. Now I will be using my trusty old friend, the weighing scale. Best friend in the kitchen. So the weighing scale comes on, and I'm using this little burger patty mold. So let's go in. That's fifty grams. Let's get fifty more. That's not fifty more. That's about hundred grams of pork. Let's see if it's enough. Should be enough. Why not? Yeah, I could. I could be. I could add a little more meat. So that's about. All right, we'll do a quarter pounder here, guys. That's. I think in America you guys use quarter pounder, right? Is your measurement? All right, that's a quarter pounder right there, and this is our burger patty. And again, I'm not I'm using the fork, so I don't have to use my hands. This way, I don't have to keep washing it while I'm doing the live stream. I could have bought the bought out the gloves for this, but I just feel it's unnecessary and wasteful today. So just push that around, and now we've got our burger patty ready to go. There it is, burger patty shaped and ready. And you know this, this little burger thing. My mother got this in the USA like ten years ago or fifteen years ago, and nobody has been able to find this exact one ever again. All right, and the rest of the ground pork is going to go in the fridge now, because um, I'm not going to be cooking the second patty right now. I'll do it later. All right, let's get cracking. All right, so you can see I've got my pans here now. If you guys want to come closer, I can. Oops, I can get you guys a little closer to the action. I won't need the weighing scale now, so this can go away. But to everybody who's trying to count calories and maintain their weight, this guy is your best friend. Always get a kitchen scale. Um, maybe after the live stream, I'll leave a link to buy it. It's about. I mean, I think it costs maybe ten dollars in America, about four five hundred rupees in India. It's the best friend you'll have in the kitchen. Portion control has never been easier. All right, the scale has been moved. I'll move some of this stuff here because we don't need it now. 
I will also quickly wipe down my work station. <clears throat> so we're going to cook the burger on the grill as well as the pineapple. So here's our pineapple. And let me bring you closer to the action now. There we go. All right, there you can see the grill. And I've also got a cast iron. So I'm going to put the grill on now. There we go. I'm also going to put the cast iron on. Both pans are heating up. And it's time to get my cheese. The cheese. <coughs> All right. Just some cheddar slice. Yeah. Now let us get the pineapple. Well, so the pineapple is going to go on the grill. Actually, what I will do is I will take this brush and I will, I will just brush some butter on this, you know, there, brush, brush some butter on the skillet, get the skillet nice and hot. Because we want to get a good char on the pineapple. Now, of course, the pineapple comes out of the can. And that's what I like about canned pineapple. The center is taken out. It's just the pineapple flesh and it is already got sugar and everything. So it will caramelize beautifully. Yes, the seasoning will weigh something. So yes, I could have added a little more meat. But you know what, it's okay. 2-3 grams is alright. It's not too big a deal. Alright, I'm going to add the pineapple here now. The pan is not hot enough. But I am hearing the sizzle. But see, there are advantages and disadvantages of that also, which we'll manage. Alright, let's get the buns on here as well. Toasting. Yeah, both the top and the bottom bun. Pineapple is starting to sizzle. Let's get the pork patty on as well. Now check this out guys. It just... It pops onto the grill and it's done. And this goes to the sink now. And my pineapple goes back in the fridge. And just let those cook. Alright. Everything is cooking now. Now it's all about being patient. Oh, and I will get a slice of cheese out now. Let's get out a slice of cheese. For those who are watching from India, this is a brand called Delecta. This is not sponsored, but this is my favorite cheese for burgers. It's a nice, nice cheese. This is not Hell's Kitchen. This is Head Banger's Kitchen. Alright, everything is cooking nicely. I've also got to check if my dog has eaten his dinner. Please, sir, can you take your dinner please? Finish it. Finish it. My dog is refusing to eat his dinner. Which is not good. Alright, let's check on the bread. Okay, it's toasting. You can give it another minute. The pineapple is toasting, the patty is toasting. Nothing much to do other than, well, what we can do very quickly is just go and get my dog to eat his food. Miso, up. Miso, come on. Up. Miso. Sir, up. Great. Please eat that. Good boy. Good boy. Take it. Finish it. I'm telling you, he is like... He's like putting on a major sulk. Alright, we're back here now. You can see everything that's cooking. Let's check the buns. I'll use the spatula maybe. Alright, buns looking... It could toast a little more on this side. This guy, 
Close the toaster a little bit, no, no pressure. All right, should we check the pineapple? Whoa! Also, these are cast iron, so I need to use the, the oven glove to work the pan a little. Okay, I think the pineapple looks charred. Let's flip it. Yes! Perfect, you can't see it from there, wait, I'll show you. Check it out. Check out the brown lines. Perfect. It goes back. The pork patty is cooking well. Let's flip that as well. Oh, the pork patty also has the grill marks. Oh, you got to see it, guys. Look at that. Grill marks. Well-defined grill marks. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of grill marks, but it's nice. So I put the cheese on top. And I got to make sure none of it gets wasted, so... None of it is sticking out on the edges. Let's check our burger buns here. Yeah, these are good. Flip them over. Alright, I'm going to turn the heat off on the bun pan. Okay. Let this cook now. I'm going to turn the heat down on this. Alright, get things going. Gotta quickly check on the dog as well. Need to finish it, no Baba. Finish it. Okay, let's flip the pineapple. Perfect. Look at the other side of the pineapple. Also beautifully charred. That is yum. Alright, I'm going to take the pineapple off. I should get a plate out. Alright, let the burger continue cooking. The cheese will melt on its own. Let's get the buns off as well. The heat is off on that. Now, how do you know your burger is cooked? Normally it's firmed up. But if you are ever worried, if you are paranoid about the burger being cooked, use a thermometer. So I can just take this and I can pierce the burger and I can see that it is alright. It's getting there, almost at, it's going up, going up, still going up, yeah, going up, going up. It's hot here also, but all right. So you can see this is cross 60. Here also it's gone way over, as in so. Give it a few pokes. Be happy with your readings. Anyway, once you remove it, it will carry over cooking. So I'm just gonna wash the tip of this and put it away. But a thermometer is a good way to remove the guesswork. The thermometer is a good way to remove the guesswork out of your cooking. Alright. I think we are good on the burger patty as well. You can see the cheese is melting. I don't want to do the whole covering the thing and like this is fine. Alright. So this is done. I'm going to turn the heat off. And that cheese is melted enough for me. And the residual heat will keep it melting. So it goes onto a plate now. To rest for a few seconds. Alright. I think we're good with this. Um, Alright, time to rock and roll, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready to eat? Let's do this. Alright, my friends. Now it is time. It is time. Also, I'm just going to make sure that the phone, hold on. Phone camera feels a little dirty. Ah, better. All right, shall we get on with dinner? It's time to bring the chair, put the fan on because it's hot. Woo! All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this. All right, so we got the top bun and the bottom bun. So I hope you can see this now, right in front of you. Yeah, 
hopefully that's good enough you can see the burger all right let's get our sauce just a little bit not too much and then just spread it around yeah same thing on the other bun a little bit of dollop and serve it around now guys this is how much sauce i like on my burger this the, these are beetroot buns so they are sort of reddish in color but like this is how much sauce i want on my burger i hate it when they take that squeezy bottle or they just pour sauce like it's going out of style so i don't like that i like this right what do we have next we have the bun we put the sauce on now um next goes on the burger patty so i will take the burger patty and on it goes oh that looks beautiful just look at that guys a beautiful bun with cheese uh, sorry and the patty and now the controversial part the beautifully grilled pineapple look at that on top the crowning glory look at that and then and then one thing i like to do is pour the resting juices on the top i should pour it on top oh yeah and now the top bun goes on and then here is my pork and pineapple burger absolutely delicious i'm dying to eat it i'm so hungry but we have one more thing to do I need a spoon. A spoon and I need a bowl. So not just a burger for dinner. We've got the delicious corn salad here. Check that out. Got a little cream cheese, a little butter, no onion, no lettuce, no tomato, no nothing. Meat, fruit, sauce and bun. I don't like I don't like to mess around with my burgers. I like to keep it simple. Lettuce is for salads and tomato also for salads and uh, onion maybe depending on which burger it is. All right. That's portion control. So I got a little bowl of that corn salad. Got the lovely pork and pineapple burger here. I'll get my spoon back. All right, time to eat dinner, guys. But, 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 but. Life may be a cruel mistress, but I am not. You know, I'm not going to leave you hanging, right? Like you trust me that much, right? Hang on. It is time to cut the burger. Because I got to show you that cross section, right? What kind of a man would I be if I didn't show you the cross section? Also, a very, very important life lesson I would like to share with you now. I told you at the beginning of this stream, there are four parts to this live stream. And this might be the longest live stream I've ever done. The reason... Oh, sorry, wait, wait. Damn, messed up my own moment. What I told you was I would first make my dinner and then I would make my lunch for tomorrow and the rest of the week, my meal prep. So the word of advice that I want to give you always or rather never cook on an empty stomach when you're doing meal prep. Because now once I've eaten this burger and I'm satiated, I won't keep pecking at my lunch that I'm cooking for tomorrow. So always, always cook after you've eaten. The same thing applies to shopping for food. When you go out shopping for food, don't do it on an empty stomach. It is the worst thing. All right, let's go. Just look at that cross section. Look at it, guys. That pineapple, that cheese. A juicy patty. You can see the other one as well. Look at that. 
just look at that cross section now look i know a lot of youtubers love to squeeze the life out of their meat and like let all the juices flow out i prefer to not do that so i don't want to i don't want to squeeze anything right now yes you want to use the central the center of the pineapple to tenderize your meat for sure all right let's do that let's eat some corn or oh, so good Mm. Which also reminds me this should go in the fridge for now. Whoops. Okay, hopefully my fridge nothing will fall out. All right. A little more corn. Mm. All right. You guys can watch this half of the burger while I enjoy this half. Let's check. Cheers. Mm. Oh, sweet. <clears throat> Woo. Wow. Sorry guys, I am the man. I'm not kidding. I am the man. Who's the man? I'm the man. My mind is blown. Oh wow. That sweet chili sauce with the pineapple and the pork killing it and the fennel in the pork meat oh my god this is so good mm. thank you guys thank you for being my inspiration to do these live streams um, for inspiring me to cook on camera and make possibly the best pork burger I've ever made. So how I maintain my weight, like I said, is the weighing scale. The weighing scale is my best friend. I portion out everything. I eat in moderation. I don't overeat. Like I need 2000 calories in a day to maintain my weight. I try and make sure I don't exceed that. In fact, I try and eat in a calorie deficit when I want to lose weight. Absolutely will not be stopping the videos when I move. They will be shot in advance so you don't miss them. Sounds amazing. Mm. So like for example, for breakfast today, I had a slice of bread which was about 70 calories about another 40 calories of butter was 110 calories one fried egg 90 calories 200 a slice of cheese another 100 maybe 300 calories so I ate about 4 450 calories for breakfast lunch was about 500 maybe so it's about 900 say 1000 on the upper limit in the evening, I ate some grapes. I ate a cookie. Take another 200 calories. That's 1200 calories. Even if this is 600 calories or 700 calories for the whole meal, I'm still under 2000 calories. And even if I eat dessert, I will just about touch 2000 calories. And I also went to the gym today and I may have burned anywhere from 150 to 200 calories. So I have that buffer as well. So I have basically... I can eyeball most of the time my calorie intake for the day. So like I know tomorrow morning I won't weigh lighter than I did today because when I weigh train my body sort of retains a lot more water. But yeah. But it works well.
I struggled with keto eventually and gave up. So, I weight train two or three times a week at best. Most of the times I do it twice a week. And every other day I walk at least six kilometers. How to overcome hunger pangs? Yeah, so here's the problem. Now, when you're trying to cut calories, you are going to feel hunger. Here are my top two tips. One, focus on protein in your meals. If you get a good amount of protein in your meal, you will feel more satiated. Second, I'll give you three tips. Drink water before, after, during, whenever. Keep drinking water. Uh, try black coffee. That might help you suppress your appetite a little bit. Or use intermittent fasting as a tool, which is also quite easy to help you con control your calories. And the last one, the most one, the one that I feel is most important. Don't buy any high calorie snacks and keep it in your house. Instead, stock up on fruits and vegetables. So when I'm hungry, fruits, oranges, watermelon, grapes, pineapple, um, apples, like eat fruits, eat lots of fruits, eat vegetables, lots of vegetables. So I eat cucumber, carrot, beetroot. All these I eat, dude, like I'll boil the beetroots and keep them in my fridge and I'll just eat beetroot plain, cucumber, uh, what are, whatever other vegetables you like, tomato if you're into tomatoes. So just eat fruits and veg because all that fiber fills you up. Mm, this pork burger is so good. But it's also quite filling. So I'm not... So you can make a salad also, but salad means you'll put dressing. You'll have to make it like I'm saying, keep raw cucumbers in your fridge. Just eat, eat a cucumber at four o'clock in the evening, evening. If you're hungry, eat the beetroot at six o'clock, eat the carrot at seven, eat the apple at eight. I don't know. It's just that they don't require any cooking. They're just there. You just pick them up and you eat them. Bell peppers. I had a drummer of mine on our last UK tour. We went to a farmer's market. He bought a whole bunch of fruits and he bought bell peppers. He's from uh, Latvia. He just picked up a, a bell pepper and chomped into it like it was an apple. I was like, oh, okay. Fantastic. Yeah, you can make sugarless pickles as well. Basically, eat nutritious food. The more nutritious food you eat, the better things will be. Exactly. And especially in, in the UK and Europe, the produce is amazing. What a burger. What a burger. Wow. Here's the second half. I'm actually not sure if I'm going to be able to eat this because I'm feeling quite full now. And I still have a few spoons of my corn salad. So just in case I don't finish this, I'll put it away and eat it for breakfast tomorrow. Ah, I see my usual troublemakers are here. Hello, Momo and Mary, you wanna? How are you guys doing? Whoops. Dropped a coriander stalk. Now see, this corn salad is filling. Corn has lots of fiber. There's some fat in the cheese and the butter. And that has filled me up. And I can actually just be done with my dinner right now. Or I can eat this later. 
But right now I'm pretty good. All right, I'm done with the corn. I'm about ready to rock and roll, guys. Are you? Why isn't corn digested properly? That's because you ain't chewing it, brother. You gotta chew that corn. Chew it. 32 times. Masticate your food. Break it down into absolute pulp and it will come out as absolute pulp as well. Okay, I may eat the burger. I'm definitely eyeing it. Mm. Yummy burger. Anyway, we can get some of these things out of the way. Where am I moving to next? I don't know. I am right now flat hunting. And so far, I've just been seeing one shitty flat after another shitty flat at ridiculously exorbitant prices because the housing market has just gone to like shit. Like it's absolutely bonkers. I'm just picking sesame seeds off the cutting board. Chris Barnes or Corpse Grinder? Not even a question. Chris Barnes is not on the list. Corpse Grinder all the way. Should I eat the burger? I know I want to. Like look at that cross section. Look at that juicy burger with cheese and pineapple. Oh, it smells so good. If given the option, would you prefer organic ghee over butter? No, the word organic is just abused and overrated. Just eat everything. It's fine. Butter is fine. Ghee is fine. They are both fats at the end of the day. Yeah, both are fat. It's pure fat. Like, yeah, the, the butter has some milk solids. The ghee has the milk solids removed. But it's pure fat. It don't matter if you're eating organic ghee or regular ghee. Ghee is ghee, brother. Why is the bun pink? Because this is a beetroot bun. All right, let's do it, guys. Oh, sweet baby. Mmm. So good. Now this is the Headbangers Kitchen Pork and Pineapple Burger. Woo! I also use ghee for Indian dishes because it, it really works well with a lot of Indian dishes. Oh, this is so good. Thank you, Nancy. So I have a series called My Unimpressive Weight Loss Transformation. Check that out. Metal Bharat is so old. It was a promo for NH7. NH7 doesn't even have metal bands half the time now. How mad were you when Cody beat Roman last night? I have no idea who those who those two are. Hmm. Yummy. Well, NH7 is a festival. It has to make money. So it caters to an audience that has money to spend. Metalheads don't have money to spend. And hence, there's no metal at NH7. Where am I moving, bro? I'm moving. Where are you moving for? I don't know. When I find a house, I'll move there. Okay. Uh, Jessica, yeah, I'm happy to share the info with you. So, I started my weight loss journey at 84 kilos. I lost 12 kilos or 10 kilos and reached about 72 kilos. Then I gained 4 kilos and at 76 kilos, I started keto. I lost... Uh, I think again 10 kilos almost on keto I reached 62 66 kilos 
then with carnivo i reached my lowest weight ever at 64 kilos then i gained all the weight back and reached 76 kilos then i gained a lot of weight back and reached 79 kilos but because i am working out and i am sort of building muscle now i am sitting at 75 kilos and i hope to lose about 5 kilos more and i should be absolutely fine 5 kilos of body weight uh, of body fat that's what i'm aiming for i don't actually play any kinds of video games so the seasoning i use for the pork was uh, something i made myself it's equal parts of fennel oregano and garlic powder and add salt to taste that's it the current metal scene in india is good it's uh, growing evolving we use ghee on the northeast of brazil's cuisine we call it bottle butter interesting that's very cool why do you want to gain body fat i want to lose body fat that's why i work out eat high protein i'm good Normally I would eat a chicken burger because it's lower in calories, lower in fat and higher in protein. But today for the live stream I said I'll do pork. Mm. That sweetness of the pineapple is just killing it. Hello Charlene, lovely to see you as well. Mm. This was winner winner pokey dinner. I'm feeling really full. Okay. I definitely overate a little bit. Could have done without the corn salad. So Jessica when I was on the keto diet I always started to feel sad and once I ate carbs I felt better so are you on keto uh, or are you just eating normally in a calorie deficit if you are in too much of a deficit you will start to feel fatigue because your body doesn't have enough fuel so if you have like too great a calorie deficit like if you need say 1800 calories to maintain your weight You don't want anything more than a four hundred to five hundred calorie deficit. If you're eating like nine hundred thousand calories when you need eighteen hundred, you're gonna feel like crap. Yeah. So when you're transitioning into keto, you can often feel very uh, sad, like not good, like it's called the keto flu. For me, it just I could not put myself through that constantly. What are your thoughts on chicken cooked in an air fryer? I mean you can cook anything and uh, anything and make it taste good if you know what you're doing. Is demonic resurrection still on? Um yes and no. Yep, that's my advice to most people do not do keto if you are not um you know really like motivated to do it. Like make smaller sustainable lifestyle changes that you can actually adhere to. like instead of eating two chapatis eat one instead of eating like 200 and 300 grams of rice with your curry and your dal eat 100 grams buy a weighing scale weigh out your food get rid of all the rubbish snacks in your house and eat more fruits and vegetables so many different things you can do i have never eaten mithun cow but i am dying to eat it now that you've told me what like that it it's a dish that exists i will look up the recipe because i definitely would love to look into what this is mithun cow sounds nuts okay i need to wash my hands first and foremost so meanwhile you guys get ready cuz we're going to start cooking again time to get back to cooking ooh I did say this was going to be the longest and most extreme live stream I've ever done.
but we must also make sure the dog eats his dinner miso please eat your food otherwise i'm going to take it away miso finish it here finish it sorry it's feeding the dog is being very very disobedient miso please eat your dinner miso do you want it or no or i'm taking this taking this i'm taking this i'm taking this i'm taking this food miso great come on don't be difficult i don't have time to sit and hand feed you now there you go oh it's being difficult come on eat it finish it miso finish it no the dog is not on the no he is a pahadi mutt miso if you finish your dinner i will give you dahi please eat it it's like get a dog they said it will be great they said it's like a toddler i'm going to have to hand feed him i think miso please eat your dinner i can't believe i'm spending my live stream trying to get the dog to eat his food miso will you please eat your dinner finish it i'll give you dahi or just i'm going to take it away okay i'm giving you 10 minutes if you don't finish it <laughs> if you don't finish it in 10 minutes sir i'm going to take it away if you don't finish it in 10 minutes take it me so finish it stop being difficult finish it come on All right, you know what? We're going to get back to cooking. All right, I'm cooking some food, guys. Let's get cracking. Okay, so what are we cooking now? Uh, so I want to eat dahi rice this week. Thank you, free love. Appreciate it. All right. So let's get cooking. so i uh want to make some dahi rice for this week's meal prep so for those who don't know dahi rice is basically boiled rice with yogurt and tempered spices in it and i want to eat that on the side with some chicken and some broccoli but done in indian style so here is the chicken that i have marinated This is just marinated in my chapli kebab masala. So to get cooking now, I need to move the cast iron from here. All right, as in one of the cast irons. That's this one. Ah, let's move this guy. Okay, and let's get this guy here. This guy, yeah. So we'll fry the chicken in that, and we got to make some rice first. So let's get cracking. So what do we need? Hold on, hold on. I'll be joining in a second. I need a pot. Here's the pot. A deep bottom saucepan with a lid, which I'm sure is lying around here somewhere. Hang on. Here's the lid. Right. So here, I've got 200 grams of short grain rice. This is called jeera ka samba. Because the grains are so tiny, they actually look like cumin. See, check it out. Now I'll show you the rice packet. this is the rice i can show you the packet name i guess that's the rice yeah so it's a south indian short grain rice i've soaked it for about 
I mean, you can soak it for like 30, 40 minutes is more than enough. Even 20 minutes does it. But I was, I was like, just wanted to get it out and measure it. So I soaked it in the evening at like 5 o'clock. And now it's like 9 o'clock. Right, so I've got 200 grams of rice. Let's get you guys to the, uh, all right, you can see the pan there. So this is 200 grams of rice soaked, which goes in here. Get all the rice in, don't waste any. There we go. All right, that's all the rice now. There we go. Now in goes some salt. See, we can add salt later in the dahi rice, so you don't need to put salt now if you don't want to. But I'll just put some. I just like to season at all stages of cooking. That's enough salt there. Now you can, I mean, if you wanna, if you if if you wanna get fancy, you can put like bay leaf and stuff when you're boiling the rice but normally they don't do any of that just plain boiled rice and now i need this so 200 grams of rice means 400 grams of water i use the one is to two method so i'm going to fill this up with water you can hear that that is the water 400 grams of water goes in here and now we bring it up to a boil so get the stove on fantastic now I've also got some broccoli here which I'm going to cook with my chicken Yeah, this is going to be cooked with my chicken. So I have some chicken, some vegetable and the rice. So let's get this cast iron on the stove. Alright. Meanwhile, the rice is cooking as well. Hopefully you can see what's going on. There we go. We'll put a little bit of oil in the cast iron. There we go, and then of course, got to just spread that oil around, let it heat up. You can see the rice there on the stove. Got the cast iron here. I also need to pack away some things while we are having this chat. So I'm going to put away the mayo. The sweet chili mayonnaise can go in the fridge. Okay. Um, I think that's more or less it. I can put away some of these dishes because I'm done with them. Alright. Normally I would just wash all this as I go. All right, let's, I think this is hot now. Yeah, the pan is nice and hot. I am going to add in the chicken now. And I'm also going to add in the broccoli. Yeah, because I want them to cook together. Saute. Yes, fried broccoli, chicken and dahi rice. There we go. The heat nice and up. Get the spatula, get that broccoli nestled in there so the broccoli is going to also cook in the chicken juices and it will get some of that chickeny flavor which is what i want 
there we go nice and just leave it you don't need the chicken to cook cook because what's going to happen is the broccoli is also cooking so all the juices will mix and it will be great together house hunting is okay a lot of shitty houses at very high prices so it's not ideal but it will do the job for now i am also going to add in some curry leaves to this this is just for like some fragrance and flavor some curry leaves look i like one pot very simple dishes i don't like to complicate stuff i don't like to make it too crazy come to thane thane is too far for me i need to be next to juhu so yeah unfortunately i can't come to thane sorry otherwise yeah i would have got great houses in thane i'm pretty sure all right so you can see the rice is coming to a boil or like a proper rolling boil so now what i do is i turn the heat down and i put the lid on and now we let it cook for 10 minutes so currently it's 9:43 we will check in on the rice at 9:53 all right the chicken is cooking let's get things moving yeah you can see the chicken's got some nice color on it now oops there we go excellent and these are chicken thighs so they won't get overcooked you can cook nicely we've got some color on them now you can just sort of move them around like a stir fry in fact what i'm going to do now is i'm going to create a bit of steam by covering this with a lid So now what we are doing is we are creating steam and allowing the broccoli to steam and soften. Shouldn't you add the broccoli when the chicken is done so they don't get soggy? No, uh, the chicken cooks really fast. Chicken cooks very very fast, my friends. Don't be fooled by chicken. Chicken is a quick cook. So I think that's happening we got some ginger garlic here and I got these special dried red chilies check it out the little they almost like little cherry tomatoes so I'm going to use these in the dahi rice uh and uh, got some cilantro here as well all the things I need and of course lots of curry leaves and we also got some peanuts some peanuts all right i actually do need to check in on the rice cuz for the first time it's actually boiling over slightly all right that's fine okay let's check in on our chicken i'll give you guys a proper view there we go oh that's looking really good oh beautiful see the broccoli is still crisp not even close to in fact what i will do is i will create some more steam by just putting a splash of water in and covering it and letting it steam so i don't i don't like my broccoli too crunchy uh hello zombie the gamer uh i guess you are famous so well welcome to the live stream add some black pepper i have already seasoned and spiced it um so let it just cook now the rice is cooking as well we'll go check in and see if the dog has eaten his food at all me so can you please finish your dinner sir 
Why are you troubling me on my live stream? Do you want me to take it away? I will take it away. He just he just noses around in it for two minutes and then he goes and sits away. He is like, no, screw you. I'm not eating. What a guy. Anywho, let's get back to this. Okay, the rice is bubbling over again. Hey, President Witty Soft, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Very, very, very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, this is his normal food. He keeps making a... Some days he'll eat it in like five seconds and some days he'll be like, I will take all your energy out of you and then I will eat it. All right. Yeah. And what we've also done is we kind of created like a little chicken jus, which is now going to cook the broccoli. A broccoli is still crisp, but the chicken is cooked. So I'm technically overcooking the chicken a little bit. Let's check in on the rice, which has about five minutes more. So what you want to do is open up the rice and see if all the water has evaporated. In this case, oh, it's still plenty of water. I might need to, I think a little extra water got in. But we still have time, five minutes more. So let's see. Let that continue cooking. The chicken is also being done. Everything seems to be going well. It's not a very long, time-consuming sort of thing. My dog is two and a half years old. Uh, no, I don't have a rice cooker. I have too many things in my kitchen already. I've got a coffee machine. I've got a kitchen aid. I've got the instant pot. I've got an oven. I mean, there's literally no place left. I was very lucky to get this kitchen and this house, so quite bummed to be leaving it. All right, let's check in on this. Looking good. All right, most of the water is drying up. Broccoli is gonna catch that flavor. Yeah, I think it's cooked, the chicken is cooked. You know, and I'm just gonna cover it. Actually, wait, I'll show it to you guys first, properly. Have a good look at that. So we've got like a nice, you know, color on the chicken. Got some color there. The broccoli is still hard. The broccoli is still hard. See, those who are saying broccoli cooks like super fast, it doesn't. It actually takes as much time. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the heat off here. Turn the heat off. Cover it. And now once it's cooled down, I'll just pack it and put it away. So let's get to the rice because it is now, yep, 9.50. Well, still three minutes to go technically. But I will check in on it. Almost there. Also taste a little just to make sure that it's it's getting cooked. See how tiny the rice is. This is the South Indian Jeera Samba rice. Oh yum. So the good thing with dahi rice is even if you overcook the rice for dahi rice, it's fine. Like it's absolutely amazing. So it's 9.51, two minutes left. The rice will be almost done. Then I just need to turn the heat off and let it sit for 10 minutes more. And then I will open it and fluff it up. So as of now, um, the rice is kind of uh, almost done. Another two minutes, I think I'll just shut it off then. Uh, yeah, so if you are making fried rice, you ideally want to make it the day before and keep it in the fridge overnight. Uh, that sort of helps the rice to dry out a little bit. I will use the fork, yes, to fluff the rice. In fact, now I can show you the rice a little bit. Let's get you guys here. Yeah, so there's the, you can see the rice is, look, it looks quite good already. And if you see, I mean, I don't think you can see, but I can see the water is almost done. 
as soon as the clock hits 53 i will just turn the stove off yeah so we're just waiting a few seconds more come on turn 53 and it is still 9.52 we are waiting for it to become 9.53 you know what forget it it's close enough I'm turning the heat off let's turn the heat off and it's done now we let this sit for 10 minutes and the chicken and broccoli is also done and now it's just steamed and it's perfect and now once it cools down I will pack it away and put it in the fridge uh, once this is done, we will make the dahi rice. So dahi rice has a, a couple of steps. So hold on. Right. That's off. That's off. Okay. All the stoves are off. Fantastic. So dahi rice, what we're basically going to do is once that rice is uh, done, we're going to mix that cooked rice, which should normally have been cooled down a little bit. But that's okay. So I will mix that rice with the yogurt. I'll show you which yogurt I'm using. So now for many years, Americans were always confused when I was using yogurt because in America, yogurt is like flavored and it's sweet and it's of different fruits and stuff like that. So this is just basically like more like think like Greek yogurt. It's unflavored and it's just plain. There's nothing in it it's just plain yogurt and plain yogurt is about uh, 58 calories per 100 grams which is not a lot so 100 this is like a 300 gram box 350 or 380 and it has only 6 grams of total no 4.5 grams of carbs 4.5 grams of carbs so yogurt is also keto friendly and you mix this with the rice and then you either with ghee or some kind of oil you will fry uh, some mustard seeds the chilies the curry leaves some peanuts ginger garlic and then you will pour that into the rice and yogurt mixture or the rice and yogurt mixture goes into that mixture and then you finish with some coriander and it's done and you eat it cold from the fridge it's it's a yummy light very refreshing dish i love it <coughs> I'm going to put this back in the fridge for now. Oh. Meanwhile, let's eat some dessert. So these are some Indian blueberries. Fresh blueberry. Because your berry special. That's what it says. Fresh blueberries because you're very special. So, which is cool, like you get blueberries in India now, which is great. It says farm fresh, 100% natural, residue free. I mean, not that I was looking for any of that. I just wanted some blueberries. Again, blueberries, fruits make great desserts. So if you're hungry for like, a little bit of dessert a handful of blueberries I'm just going to give it a rinse there we go rinse my blueberries It's good. I mean, if you got some calories left over, they're nice and sweet, a little bit tart. So like if you're really like, like trying to diet or whatever, you can get the slim dahi. So the low fat yogurt, put a little bit of honey for sweetness, throw like a bunch of blueberries into it or any fruit actually, pineapple, mango, and just eat that and that's your dessert
but today i'm also going to be eating because i i I've, i've been saving this i am going to be eating a sugary dessert but a small one something like about 100 calories yeah i mean if you don't like blueberries eat whatever fruit you like i mean any fruit will do peach pear apple grapes um what else do you get dragon fruit uh durian um what else oranges mandarins um so many fruits i mean the world is your fruit cake oh it's very hot guys i've got to like oh oh going to have to take a shower after this i mean which anyway i would have done all right is it all, almost 10 minutes i feel like i need to go check on the dog again and if he's not eating i got to put his food away because otherwise it will just sit out and get spoiled all right me so enough now either you eat it or i'm taking it away this is the third time i've threatened him okay i'm not leaving here till you finish eating it me so finish it okay other than taking it come on eat it now what is this stupid licking will you please eat it properly so sorry guys can you please eat it as i'm taking it away do you want it me so do you want this please eat it good boy good me so me so that's not called eating it come on eat it as i'm taking it away do you want it he won't let me take it away but he won't eat it as well Miso, will you eat it? Now the camera is at you. People are watching you. Miso, I'm taking it away. Do you want this, Miso? Do you want this? Do you want this? Man, he's just like, okay, take it, take it. I'll give you dahi. If you eat this, I'll give you dahi. Do you want dahi? Does Miso want dahi? You know, I think he knows the cameras on. Do you want dahi? Does Miso want dahi? Okay, he's really just like, yeah, nope, not interested. Please finish it. Please. Okay, you know what I'm taking it. Ha. Huh. My watch says time for bed. Yeah, he's being very stubborn. Miso here, take it. Miso, can you please eat it? It's a piece of chicken. Okay, I'm taking this. Then eat it. Eat it now. Eat it. Finish it. Okay, you know what? Forget it. I've had it. Miso, no, no. Now you, 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 you've done it. No me so you're done finished Me so finished Yeah I don't think he wants it He need it tomorrow <sighs> Give me 5 seconds Okay me so this is the last and final time come on inside come on Get it. All right on the bright side we kill time Let's get the rice here Okay show you the rice now Yeah, I don't think he wants his dinner. All right, so we got our rice here. Okay, that's steaming. Looks beautiful, if you ask me. Look at that. Perfectly cooked rice. And now you take a fork, and then you just fork it up. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect rice. How good does that look? Okay. 
good so that's the rice turn the ac on it's the ac is not working properly and trust me he does this every day don't worry guys we've had him for a while now he's got chicken in his bowl his bowl has chicken all right now what we're going to do so we're going to put the rice in this bowl yeah so i'm going to put the rice in this bowl so we just also allow it to cool down a little bit and of course use a spatula to get all the rice out out of the bowl by the way last time on the live stream i fed miso and he ate his food in 5 minutes without any fuss today he's just being difficult all right there we go and now just have to let this cool down a little bit or just actually we can deal with it right now as well let's get our yogurt that's the yogurt you can see it's nice and thick and creamy get a spoon there you go see nice thick yogurt so we can just put that in this Now you can also add a little bit of milk, which is what some people do, to thin it out a little bit because the yogurt is is quite thick sometimes. Okay, and just give that a mix. That's a better view. This mix and that will also cool the rice down. There you go. And like I said, some people add milk also. If you want a little more loose, loosey goosey, so you can just fold it in. Make sure all of it is coated. All the rice is coated with the yogurt. I think I have some milk in the fridge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you put a little milk just to loosen it up a little. Perfect. There we go. And that's done. So now a lot of people actually just eat it like this. Like this is it. This is dahi rice. Um I will taste it for seasoning. Could use a little salt. and the uh, the sort of yogurt has a nice tanginess to it so little salt perfect there we go now give it all a good mix perfect all right you guys ready to make the sugar please i normally don't like putting sugar in my dahi rice but just for you i'll put a pinch only for you ah huh? whoever you are Some sugar just a pinch pinch of sugar add it to the dahi rice to balance it a little bit you don't want it is not to make it sweet it's just to it like in when you make tomato sauce you add a little sugar to kind of cut through the tartness so that's why okay now i need to get the stove back on 
So check it out. I'm going to do a tadka now, uh, without the grated ginger, but with ginger juliennes. So let's let's get cooking, my friends. All right, let's get our kadai on the stove. Okay, let's give you guys a front row seat as always. There we go. So I'm going to start with some ghee. Yeah, because I like ghee rice. I like dai rice. I like ghee in my dai rice. So I'm going to start with a, a generous amount of ghee. Get all of it out. She could probably use a little more than that, no? Use a little more. Okay, that should be enough key. It should definitely be enough key. Okay. Now we're going to turn the stove on. Now I have a different way of doing things. I'm going to turn the stove on. And I'm going to fry some of these peanuts in the ghee because okay. these are not roasted peanuts I think that should be enough enough peanuts in the ghee rice and then of course we need a few other things Yes, if you guys can find the like button, please do do that. Please do 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 hit it. Um, right, so let the peanuts sort of fry in the ghee. Meanwhile, I will get my spice dabba out. You guys all have one of these at home, right? At least all the Indians. Now I am actually going to throw the rye in right now only. I don't know if I should let the peanuts fry a little bit first. Anyway, we can fry the peanuts a little bit first. Oh, some fried peanuts, why not? Yes, it's fun. Cooking is nice, fun, relaxing. Nothing crazy has to be done. You guys are able to see everything properly. You is that yeah there you go you can see everything properly so the peanuts are frying now oh oh fried peanuts who doesn't love fried peanuts you can see them all snapping open oh oh maybe that's not the smartest thing to do oh holy smokes snapping peanuts Okay, fried nuts. Let's add the mustard seeds. Yeah, good amount of mustard seeds in there. <coughs> I'm going to add in the chilies as well. I'm also going to add in the ginger. I'm also going to add in curry leaves. I mean, everything is snapping and popping, so I got to be careful. There we go. More of the fried curry leaves, lots of them. And also a little bit of garlic, because I love garlic. I don't know if purists will be happy with this, but... Whoops! Whoops! I had a chili fly out. Wow, this smells amazing. And you can put a whole bunch of stuff in your tadka, whatever you like. There are many, many different variations of this. I'm pretty sure everyone's house makes it differently as well. Yeah, so everything is popping. Everything is frying. You've got the nice tadka happening. 
The curry leaves are nice and crispy. They're fried. I can smell everything really well. Okay, things are browning. I see the garlic browning. I turn the heat off. And now, it's time to add the dahi rice to this. There we go. Done. You can add some more dahi if you want. You can add a little more milk. And like I said, this will be eaten tomorrow at leisure. So I'll put a little more milk in, which will also help bring the temperature of the pan down and make it yeah perfect. There we go. Perfect dahi rice. I'm happy with this. I think my wife Dipti, who's a Malu, will approve. Maybe my in-laws will as well. Look at that. Perfect dahi rice. I think that looks good. I think we've done a good job. Simple, easy, delicious. That's the dahi rice. Here's the chicken and broccoli which i will eat with it as well and uh, i guess that's my meal and there's my dog he obviously doesn't want his own food looks like upma hey gramplex honestly none of it matters what matters is your overall consumption of these things. What is your consumption of fats in general? What is your consumption of carbs, proteins? Look to build overall good habits rather than trying to worry about oil, ghee, this, that. Eat all of them. Eat a little ghee. Eat a little olive oil. Eat a little animal fat. Eat anything. Eat it in moderation. Let's try. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Ooh. See, now it's a good thing that I ate my dinner. Oh, this is so good. If you have high cholesterol or any other medical problem, do not take advice from the internet. Not even from me. If you have high cholesterol, Go talk to your doctor. Don't listen to people on the internet. None of us are taking responsibility for your uh, health. Tomorrow, if anything happens to you, all the influencers, all the doctors on the internet will be like, oh, it's written in our Instagram bio that this is not to be taken as medical advice. So if you have high cholesterol, go to your doctor, listen to your doctor. Mm, I forgot. Got to add the coriander. That should be enough. Now it's done. There we go. Perfect. Now it's done. Miss your keto recipes even though I am off keto myself. But why do you miss my keto recipes? You are not even doing keto. Watch the normal recipes. They are so good. Miso. Up. Okay. I got to take your food away, dog. For time. Okay, this time we're really done, huh? I've had it, Miso. Done. Finished. No. No, no, no. No, no, no. You cannot keep doing this. Alright. No. No. I, I fed you four times, five times and you rejected your food every time and I've got a stream to do. So I'm going to put the fan on. I am sweating buckets. Whew. Well, where's my pineapple and pork? I ate it like an hour ago. This live stream has been on for one minute, 105 minutes. It's actually time for my dessert now. 
Ooh, I'm sweating. Need some water. Hold on. I'll keep you guys here. Ooh, some water. And get some more water. Don't worry, you can always watch the replay of the video. How long does the weather? How's the weather in Mumbai? It's damn hot. Uh, the cooling down happened like in December, Jan, maybe a little bit of Feb. Oh, it's back to the heat, guys. So I made a pork and pineapple hamburger. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. So we did an amazing pork and pineapple hamburger. I also made a corn salad and have you ever considered doing food tours in India? There are many companies that do it better. I don't really eat or enjoy Indian street food. So I'm more of a guy who likes to eat Japanese food. Uh, Thai food. So yeah, why don't you just wear a vest in so much heat? Uh, it doesn't really make a difference. It's the same thing for me. Uh, also, I'm not sexy enough for a vest. No, I actually play guitar. I don't play bass as an instrument. That post was made on April 1st. Thank you, Chaos Goat. I play in a death metal band myself called Demonic Resurrection. We're a symphonic band, symphonic death metal band from India. So we made a pork and pineapple burger. I ate the pork and pineapple burger along with a corn elote salad, elote, elote salad, which I also made. And then we did my meal prep for the entire week. So I made some dahi rice and some chicken. And now I'm going to eat dessert. You know, uh, how many of you have watched the a uh, show called Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso, is anyone familiar with Ted Lasso? So I watched one episode of Ted Lasso and Dipti and I got a bit bored and then we just skipped it. But then we restarted it again and we got kind of hooked to it. So in that show, this guy called Ted Lasso makes these shortbread biscuits which he gives his boss. Now, when anything is popular in popular culture, there's somebody making something out of it. So if you guys know binging with Babish, Ayurvedic cooking is all bullshit. Ayurveda is complete pseudoscience. I don't like it. I don't follow it. I don't agree with it. I don't promote it. I just think Ayurveda is a pseudoscience and they are no absolute big no from me. Ayurveda is like a snake oil salesman. Everyone is selling this bullshit. Like I had some friends who went to an Ayurvedic doctor and the doctors giving them the most garbage information. Don't eat this and they have no logic or reasoning. They just follow some old principle which they don't know jack about why it works because that's the problem with Ayurveda. They cannot actually replicate the results. It's just throw everything at the kitchen and the kitchen sink and if something sticks then okay it works. So yeah Ayurveda is a big thumbs down from me. No, no Ayurveda, no homeopathy, none of that. Sorry. But on, other, on another note, also all that there's no science behind any of that Ayurvedic cooking uh, sort of guidelines and all that stuff. It's absolute garbage. Like I'm not even going to be polite about it. It's absolute garbage. Anyway, back to Ted Lasso. So this... Uh, Lovely home chef uh, Chubby Baker makes a Ted Lasso style shortbread biscuit. So I got myself some for dessert because I was like, I can't resist. And it's really yum. So I'm going to open it and eat it. It's probably about 100 calories, 125 maybe. Um, yeah, so let's open it up. There it is. 
I mean, looks very legit. I ate it yesterday. I really liked it, but like proper. Now this, I'm pretty sure Miso wants to eat. He loves this stuff. Like he loses his mind for shortbread. I mean, it's sugar, butter, and flour. Now look. Is this a healthy food? Probably not. I mean, is there anything wrong with it? No. Does it taste good? Yes. Should you not eat it? Absolutely not. Should you moderate how much you eat? Absolutely yes. So you can have your treats every once in a while. There's no need to feel guilty about it. Stop calling foods good and bad call them nutritious and less nutritious you know hmm. sweet little bit of salty organic is another is just another buzzword organic again in India, what are the regulations? Who is checking the regulations? What classifies something as organic? It's all very murky and vague. Organic is just a way to charge you double for the same product. Like organic onions available at 60 rupees a kilo instead of the regular 30. I mean, if you can afford it, great. But the average person, probably not the not affordable for most people. But is it superior in any way? No. You'll still get the same nutrition. Mm. So good. So good. You know, Minister, if you ate your food, I would have given you this also. Have you tried making a chicken pot pie? I've made a, a filling like a chicken pot pie filling, but I haven't actually made a chicken pot pie myself. I should. Yeah, so in, in America, I think there are multiple definitions for chicken as well. There is a cage free, there is free range, and then there's one more sort of thing. I mean, everything is organic technically. Have you ever tried yakitori? Hell yeah. I love good yakitori and we have some great Japanese restaurants in Bombay. I love some lovely pork belly yakitori, chicken wings with togarashi butter. Oh my God, so many. I think I'm going to stop now. I'm done. Do you believe in meditation and how food influences the mind? That depends what you mean by that. Because again, food, the human mind actually is more capable of influencing the body than the other way around. Look, there's no one particular food or particular diet that can improve or better things for the most part. There are always exceptions. Like this whole concept of superfoods, and make your brain sharper or raise your immunity by eating XYZ. Garbage, bullshit, marketing, absolute rubbish. Your immunity can only be boosted via vaccinations and an overall healthy lifestyle over years and years and years. You can't just start eating kale and quinoa and build immunity. That's not how it works. Similarly, eating superfoods is not suddenly going to make you smarter. If you actually study, use your mind regularly, you will actually be smarter. Like there are actual activities you can do to improve your mental cognit cognition and function. You know, like things that are actually proven by science. Yes, all this stuff of eating some pills or foods and suddenly magic happens is all BS. The thing is today... People are easily fooled because there is so much misinformation. 
people don't have the time to read up about everything to do research or whatever so fear mongering influencers are the rage now like that's the whole thing the whole thing is to go into a supermarket pick up a package and because they are dumb idiots who can't research anything who can't say out words they scare you about it look at this thing it's a chemical yeah you are a chemical water is a chemical what chemical what are you talking about what is the effect of that chemical what is the dosage required for it to be bad so yeah don't listen to those idiots are you really in gutslit i mean the post was on 1st april and gutslit played in pune yesterday and i wasn't there i'll leave it to you to decide <coughs> what the answer is wow we're closing in on 2 hours for this live stream i want to say a big thank you to everyone who's been part of the live stream i really appreciate it get a lab test done first of all of these chemical based fertilizers again everything is a chemical including the fruit what chemical are you using as a fertilizer what pesticides are you talking about what is the process of that fruit coming to you you have to go a lot deeper into the actual process because it varies from farm to farm from fucking uh, area to area it's not just like one blanket size no also what is the definition of organic unless you are growing the fruit yourself in your backyard there is no guarantee what is going into it my pleasure jessica absolutely in fact our bombay vegetables are grown in all natural compost on the railway tracks because in case you don't know most of mumbai does not have a toilet to shit in the poorer people actually don't have sanitation access and this is true for a lot of the country so they actually go take a crap on the railway tracks which is the same place where some vegetables are grown on the side and stuff so yeah that is all natural fertilizer and compost organic anyway 117 minutes live on this live stream any final questions let's not have arguments on this let's ask let's do some nice stuff now my pleasure sara thank you for being on the live stream by the way in case you guys haven't been getting my latest updates on youtube there are a whole bunch of new recipe videos on the channel whenever you have the time please go and watch them leave a comment smash the like button and please enjoy all the new content i've got a whole bunch of amazing indian recipes many of them are actually keto friendly as well i actually don't own a car i just walk everywhere or take uh, an uber because in uber in india uber is fairly cheap i say fairly compared to the uber costs in america and the uk and all or i use an auto rickshaw sometimes even the train i used to use the bus but not anymore the bus is a little too too much fair enough sumed no problem like i said it's not that i don't agree it's like i need to see the labeling to really like if you can be assured that yeah this is grown in a certain way for sure it might be better is your channel gaining traction no actually it's it's kind of around the same thing so actually these live streams are working really well so i'm going to keep doing them we'll see how it goes like i said i've given it 6 months to see some kind of growth as long as it starts growing at some point we'll be okay um so yeah fingers crossed any final questions thank you gramplex i quite appreciate it in fact i really appreciate it i don't know why i said quite anyway i think this is uh, my time to say goodbye i will see you all very soon have a great day 
and the next live might be uh maybe friday night i don't know thursday or friday night we'll see how it goes anyway till the next episode cheers and keep cooking take care everyone